G'day, it's Ecom Rebel. We're back again with our live stream. Uh, good to have you all back again tonight. Appreciate your support. All right, so the first thing we're going to get into is we're going to draw a winner from yesterday, whoever did a comment or a question. So let's get to that now. We're going to give away $10 worth of Bitcoin cash. So let's go in, let's select a winner. Mikhail Dmitri, why the market is crashing again? I will answer that question for you, Mikhail. I just want to pay you some Bitcoin cash first. Ten dollars US. Now, when you get that, um, if you can just reply to me and let me know that you got it, that'd be much appreciated. Okay, so let's send. Done. Awesome. That's excellent. All right. So why is the market crashing again? So let's have a look what the market did today. Okay. So we're on um, Coin Market Cap. This is where you want to go if you. There's a few places, but Coin Market Cap is pretty good. So we're down uh, another. Looks like the market's down about 10% generally across the top 10, 15. We've got Bitcoin at 10,200, uh, Ethereum around about 1,100, Ripple dollar 13, Bitcoin Cash is down 1,500, Cardano about 50 cents, Stellar at 52, Neo at 143, Litecoin at 163, EOS at $11, NEM at 75 cents. So generally the market's down again. Um, yeah, we're basically in a, a bit of a, a sort of a range trading, you know, it's going up and down a couple of days, we get green, a couple of days, um, we get, uh, some red again. So if we have a quick look, uh, let's have a quick look at a chart. We'll go to Coinergy, which is a, a great site. Uh, I've used it since I started doing crypto. I signed up for it and, um. Basically, it's a great platform you can trade, but also you can uh, you get really good charts with it. So what we're going to do is we'll just have a quick look at maybe GDAX, and we'll have a look at Bitcoin. So we'll just go to the favorites, GDAX. Whoops, we'll try that again. GDAX, Bitcoin, and then we'll move that over a bit. So looking at one hour, let's change this to. Um, one day. All right. So you know, just just don't forget. You got to bear this in mind that um, May, June, July. You know, leading up to uh, December. Just have a look at where we were. I mean, this is crazy. Like in June, we were at Bitcoin was at two thousand dollars. Okay. And then in August, we hit 3,000. We had a bit of a retracement back there, just around about 3,000. It went all the way up to 5,000 and retraced. Then it went all the way up to 8,000 and then back down to six. And then we had this massive move, which was just, it was crazy. While it was happening, like everyone's getting excited, but everyone knew it was going to come back down again. So, you know, it hit 20K, went down, hit 20K again. And all the way down to about 11,000, there was a, a quick, this little tiny thing here during the day, back up again, and then all the way back down again. So now it's sitting at 10. Now, it's still not lower than some of these points here. Um, and if you have a look at the trends, and I've shown you this before, if you have a look at like the last um, trend period, even if you, uh, let's say, we'll just use a ray. Let's say we go from this point and we go all the way to that point there, and we just forget that part. We're still on track. Um, you know, when we're looking at up to this point is still in the natural progression of that trend. <laughs> hey, Steve, how you doing? Uh, they, yeah, new haircut. I know, look how sexy I look. <laughs> um, yeah, so basically we're still in this. This is the trend. This was a little bit crazy, but this is the natural trend of what we've been seeing for some time with Bitcoin, okay? So if you if you take it out to this period, if we have a look, when we were up, it sort of got up to May. Now you might go, oh, well, 
you know, is it is it going to continue on? What this is saying is that unless, if basically Bitcoin starts to drop below 8,000, below this level here, and I would say around about the 8,000, 8, once it um, drops below that, then yes, it can go possibly um, down to 6,000, 5,000, even $3,000. So this is a pretty important area in this time frame. So the next couple of months, it can still trade in this band across this way. I feel that it's going to pick up though. I, I feel that we're going to get a movement up towards this direction. And look, you know, it might take um, 12 months before we get back to 20K. Um, and and that, that and if, if it didn't have make this move, if you have a look at the progression of it, uh, over that over that year, it would have naturally reached the 20K. So this seems a little bit artificial um, and it's, you know, retraced back to a more realistic level. So we're back actually at this this level that maybe where if this didn't happen at all and this is what happens okay so um I, I think this is fine i think this is still the best time to get back in if you've got spare cash this is when you're buying because soon you'll get to this this area here um where it's just going to continue to take off and you're going to be saying to yourself oh i wish i'd put more money in and i say that a lot and because i remember i remember and maybe you do when it was at um beginning of the year it was at like we're talking sixteen hundred dollars there i was i was in this period here and i thought wow two thousand dollars and then um back here you know when it was at just done nearly a thousand dollars um wouldn't you have you liked to put a lot more into it because it's went up you know 10x since then and, and also 20x so um this is what you're gonna look for at look for now another thing too that um I use a lot with like when you do trading is the um, Fibonacci retracement. So I'll give you an idea. I'll just take this trend line off. I may have talked about them before, but they're really they're really useful uh, with charting. This is like a technical analysis thing, but they really do an amazing job. So if example, we'll just say we take this period of time. We look at this. Um, you look at the a high point, okay, and then you look at the the low point. And these are the, what we're going to connect up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw. Actually, we'll do it the other way. I'll just try this one first. Yeah, you can do it. Do it either way. Yeah, that's what we'll do. We'll do it this way. So we'll put this little one on here like this. Okay. So this um, this Fibonacci um, retracement. It's generally what it is. It's to do with the Fibonacci sequence. And I might, I might do another video on it just for Fibonacci. It's pretty good. Um, so what the idea is, is you draw between this high point here, right? And these represents how much, if you was this was the highest point, how much does it retrace back to its original level? So this level down here is 100% and this level is 50. So if it goes from there to there, it's retraced 50. If it goes from there all the way down, it's retraced 100%. And these lines here represent uh, Fibonacci levels, which are special levels. So in this period of time, and if you use that as the key point, you'll see how it retraced all the way through to this 618, okay? And then it went back up uh, and then moved on the way back down. And you can see it's near this 786. Now, um, Basically, if I draw a little box here, this will sort of, let me just find a little box to draw. This area here, and I'll make a little color. Whoops. Let's choose a color. Okay. This area here represents the buy zone. So if it went up this far and it retraced to these levels, when the price gets in this level, this is a buy zone. Now this applies um, to a lot of different coins. This is used technical analysis everywhere. Because <coughs> if you were you know, buying this coin when it was up here, that's not in the buy zone. Okay, the buy zone is always at these retracement levels between, generally, uh, it's considered six, between 618 and 786. If it goes past this line, then it's it's quite possible that it's it's not a buy zone. It's then going to reverse and continue in a downward trend. But in this area here, um, this is considered a buy zone. And 
this is where Bitcoin um, and the market essentially is right now. Okay, so this is why I'm not worried about um, you know the the market going down ten percent. Okay, uh, I'm not really worried about it. Even if it goes down to these levels, um, it's still you know it's going to reduce your overall value, but you have the opportunity again to put more into the coins. Okay, and this is incredible because <clears throat> one you got to look further out ahead. You got to look a year out ahead, okay? If you look a year out ahead, is it going to be more than what it is today? And if you believe it is, then then this is a great time to buy. Simple as that, okay? And if you have a look at the track record with Bitcoin and the crypto markets over the last 10 years, you can see why um, this is, you know, so important. You're just seeing the same thing. And I could draw these um, charts on other time frames, and you would see exactly what happens. Now, sometimes uh, when it was actually going up and up and up, if you um, kept on drawing this uh, Fibonacci retracement, you would you would actually not hit that buy zone. All right, um, you would it would keep going up and up and up, and there's no um, area where it went down so the idea behind this is you're looking for the where it actually did a retracement already and then where it's taken off so um it's the same with between this period and maybe that period you would be looking for a retracement and maybe that didn't happen and so sometimes when things take off they don't retrace and there is no opportunity to buy if you're using this method okay but this is a good thing because if you had chased that price and you had bought up here when it was 20k this was like the worst worst time to buy because you were making new highs into this. This was not like you were paying, you know that expression, you want to um, buy low and sell high. This is what it means. You need to buy when the coin's low compared to um, what it normally is as opposed to here. This is like a, a selling area. When it's making new highs, it's a sell area. So, um, yeah, generally this is how the Fibonacci works um, and I'll probably do a video on it and give you a bit more instruction on it. Um, <laughs> okay, Mr. Bazinga. Yes, you missed the bid. Normally that's just like, you know, five-day growth, but I thought I'd clean myself up a little bit. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I had a bit of fun today. Um, so, basically, that gives you an overdue, overview of the, as the market in general and, and mainly Bitcoin. And that's why I don't see any problem with the market going down. So, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, um, these are all buying opportunities because sooner or later when the price does go up to 20k and past 20k, it's going to be um, you know more expensive to get into these coins and you really want to get it while it's cheaper. So this is the best time to be buying now. Um, yeah, because you've got to look at a longer t time frame, okay? All right, uh, so let's go back. We've had a look, quick look at the market. I talked about Fibonacci retracements. We're going to go into some of the news. Now, I saw some news earlier this morning. I was only going to get on and um, uh, let you guys know about it, but I thought I'd cover it tonight anyway. So, the... Um, oh, hey, g'day, Idol. R Ramu, yep. How you doing, mate? Uh, just to let you know, with the, if you want to join the giveaway, it's pretty simple. After this live stream's over, it'll get posted on YouTube and Facebook. And all you need to do is um, put your comments or question in there with your Bitcoin cash address, and then I will pick a, a winner tomorrow night, and like I do every single day. So that's all you need to do. Um, and then if I see a good question, I'll answer that as well. But if I if I do get a question and I pick you and you've got the, the $10, um, you get $10 worth of Bitcoin cash, uh, and I get to answer your questions. But you're on the live stream, so you can ask me any question you want. And definitely, I'm going to try and give you more value than $10 that I'm going to give you on the giveaway. Okay. So, let's have a look at um, Cointelegraph. This was the first thing I woke up to this morning. Um, I saw this comes from my feed. Facebook bans crypto ads. Now, um, if you've been on Facebook, you would have seen just how many ads. And if you've done any ICOs or anything like that, um, it was... It was huge. I think my feed was just full of ICO ads. It was crazy. So um, this is this was expected. Every every time, you know, these I wouldn't call them questionable things, but they um, if there's any liability or anything like that where things can go wrong, Facebook wants to distance themselves from it. You know, Facebook, you know, don't allow you to sell firearms on Facebook. There's other things that they prohibit you from selling, money-making schemes and Ponzi schemes and 
certain affiliate stuff. So there's a lot of things they're going to ban and this was just going to be another one of them. They don't want you doing anything to do with financial stuff um, and certainly crypto and ICOs they don't want anything to do with. So they've added, um, you know, they basically, I think this is the link to the blog post. Let's have a quick look. So when I saw it, I thought, hmm, yeah, bummer. But hey, this it, it's it's a good thing. This is what Facebook does. However, there is other um, other platforms that still allow it. So this is where it says, essentially, they're talking about, you know, you would have seen those binary options. Uh, also, cryptocurrency they've put in there and ICOs, they consider them, you know, I don't know, not legit or whatever. But you've got to remember, Facebook is like serving for the US. And US at the moment, they don't want you to participate in ICOs. Okay. So, um, yeah, so these are the sort of things they don't want to see. Uh, and there's probably um, people have been complaining about them or something like that. Who knows? So that's happened. Um, you know, not much you can do about it. It doesn't affect most people because they're not advertising. But, you know, any even other related industries, like um, if you want to do a course or something like that and you want to teach people about it, you won't be able to advertise that on Facebook. So that's, you know, it's a bit disappointing, but there's other ways to do it. All right. Um, what else did I see? There's a couple of things here. Facebook banning. Oh, yeah, I think I covered a bit of this yesterday. Bitfinex and Tether get subpoenas. This is apparently old news, but it keeps coming up, okay? This 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 whole Tether, Bitfinex, you know, did they have $3 billion in the bank sitting there to back every one of those Tethers? Probably not. So, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen there? Uh, but I, I've said before, if you are in Bitfinex and you've got, or you've got any other exchanges and you have Tether, I, I would not be holding Tether. In fact, I would be out of Tether and I would be holding onto coins or something else, okay? So, um, yeah, just be aware of that because one day you're going to wake up and, um, you know, Tether's just going to... It won't go to zero, but, um, you know, it's going to go... It's going to go down big time and anyone that's holding to it... And as far as the market's concerned, Tether's only got $3 billion, okay? So, yeah, that's going to affect some people, but it's not, you know, the market's still at $500 billion, so it's not going to kill the market off if Tether falls over, but it will piss a lot of people off. All right, uh, what else was there? Um, there wasn't too much else. I did see some... I was trying to think where I saw some other articles today that I had a look at. I'm trying to remember. Actually, I think some of you guys commented on them. So I might just have a look through the comments from yesterday. And there was some some other stuff I wanted to talk about. Oh, I can't see it there. That's okay. I'll just try Bitcoin news. I might jog my memory. Been a big day for me today. Um, yeah, just getting so much stuff done and uh, there's so many ICOs happening and trying to keep on top of the ICOs. So that's pretty ex uh, pretty exciting. Let's have a look. What did I see? I think it was on Twitter that I saw something on Twitter. Yeah, there was nothing there. You know what? Twitter is actually a really good... Um, I find that Twitter seems to provide better news than some of the other places. Like, I mean, I, I do like them, but as far as um, Twitter's way... I don't know, just way better with the news. So, let's have a look. <laughs> so, there... McAfee again, um, you know, buy the effing dip. Okay, and I, I don't know if you've ever seen that, but there's some great... <laughs> great video is made about that about buying when the price is depressed in the market okay so that's pretty important i'm just going to go through some of these ones here and just scroll through um oh that's right was it neo or the other one no you know nem when it got half a billion dollars worth of nem that was the other one i want to tell you so what happened was nem within 24 hours they basically tagged all that nem that was stolen they tagged it so now who is holding that 500 billion worth of NEM cannot use it at all. It basically it's impossible to um, 
put into an exchange. It's completely tagged. They, it's like if you stole money from a bank and the, you know, they have that um, they have that ink that explodes and it puts the ink over the the um, the money. And then you, if you take that money somewhere that yeah, is ruined, they're not going to accept it because they know it's been stolen. That's exactly what they the, the development team um, did within 24 hours of that. Now, they could have done a hard fork, but there was no... It wasn't a problem with the network. It was to do with the security of the actual exchanges. So, that's why they didn't hard fork, um, which is a good thing. I don't think hard forks are great, especially to recover funds. Um, but I think the idea of them tagging the stolen funds so it can't be used, that's brilliant. I think that's a great thing. Um, yeah, what about here? Samsung is now building mining chips. So, that's good. They're probably competing with NVIDIA. Um Cryptopia. What else did I see? I'm just going to keep scrolling through there. Now, you guys are on. I can see some of your questions. Um, Shahal says, what about Falcon coin? <laughs> Is that going to be another dodgy coin? <laughs> um, what do I think of BCN? Crypto King says, what do I think of BCN? Well, I might have a quick look at BCN. Let's hopefully it's already on coin market cap. I think um, I think some of you guys like asking me all about the dodgy coins. Save your time and just go to um, you know Coin Market Cap. So BCN is that got a different name? Is it on um, Ah oh, Bitcoin? Yeah, actually, I do know a little know a little bit about Bitcoin. I know it's been moving a lot. And here's the thing, like you guys ask, and I've said this before, you guys, are, oh, what about Bitcoin or what about this? And the reason you're asking about it is because it was, you know, it was going along, nothing was happening, and then all of a sudden, there's like a big move. But if you bought anywhere up here, and then it went back down, you would have lost out. Now, it's obviously moving on up again, which is, you know, which is great, um, but it could be pumping again, and then it might, you know, they might dump it. So... The thing is getting into these coins before they do this, and it takes patience, okay? So this coin has been around for a while, um, but the good thing about this is is it's dumped right, but it's actually regained some of this now. So um, I haven't really looked into it too much, but let's see what markets are on. So it's on hit BTC, 80% of the volume. That's pretty big. And then Poloniex. I have heard problems with hit BTC. TC uh, with just some people talking about it so you gotta be careful like there's a lot of volume in there for that so I don't like at the moment it's not out on the other exchanges and they're not really trading on Poloniex um, so yeah that's quite that's quite interesting so you know it still can get to these other exchanges and be more well known uh, if we have a look at the chart really it has been going for a couple of years if we have a look at their website and see what they're talking about and their market cap looks like uh, 184 billion. Okay, so they're talking about a first private untraceable cryptocurrency. Okay, so I've said this before. Anything to do with privacy in the coin space, I think, is going to do well this year. Because um, the the more money you make in crypto, the more you want to um, keep it private. You know, if let's say you or I have, um, let's say we have a million dollars in crypto. If I advertise the fact that I've got a million dollars worth of crypto, you know, how much effort was someone going to put into finding out where I live, tracking me down, maybe trying to hack my computers so they can get access to my wallets? So it, by using coins like this, you can um, basically become untraceable and they won't know the balance of how much you have okay um, and that's the idea behind these private coins and there's, there's a bunch of them I'll probably do a video I might do a video just on the privacy coins and maybe round them up as a you know what I think of them and stuff like that but this is um, this is byte coins so essentially um, they've got all the information will be here they've got github you would join on the Twitter and you check out the telegram uh, and you would obviously go, you need to download their wallet. So we'll have a quick look at that one. Okay, so they've got wallets for Windows, they've got a web wallet, uh, and also they've got Mac, and they're working on, they've got Google Play, and I think they're working on Apple One. This is good. You, you, need, you need these wallets and that to be 
like for different platforms and stuff like that. Um, so this is good. Um, I mean, check out the news and updates. So I still think I, I haven't looked into this too much, but essentially, uh, oh, here we go. Here's their roadmap. So they're looking at a new API testing. And then they're trying to expand into Asian, Middle East. So they're trying to go for different mark markets and then plug it into payment processes. Okay, so this is just the first quarter of 2018. So look, just from looking at that and the fact that they're keeping everyone updatable, that this is, they're coming out with the, the Android wallets and you really need to be mobile. So I use, um, I use um, iOS, so I don't, I can't get access to this. But once you be, it's on a mobile and it's untraceable, and maybe you've got iOS and you get access to that, that's pretty exciting because <clears throat> before with Bitcoin you could transfer funds, but everyone can see what those transactions are. Uh, whereas in in the future, you got to remember the governments are trying to prevent you from doing this. Banks are trying to prevent you from doing this um, because essentially they they want to tax you. You know, and if you don't pay your taxes, you're going to go to jail. Okay, so um, <laughs> it's like it's like the mafia, really. That you you're paying them, um, you're paying them money, and and really, if you don't pay them, you, something bad's going to happen to you. So that's what governments do. Um, and and it doesn't matter whether it's some sort of uh, uh, regime or whether it's a it's a government like in Australia where we have a, dec a democracy. It doesn't matter. Governments still want their money. They still want to be paid, and they still want to tax you uh, every chance they get. So um, these coins are going to do really well in the future, and this is one of them. And at the moment, I think um, even at this level, see, we're, even though we've had, it's not in all the, it's not in all the markets yet. So if they get onto more markets, that would be good. And as you can see, a lot of people sold here because that would have been a huge. You know they would have made a huge amount of money and they've sold off but see how it's it came in at a higher level than it was here and now it's pumping again so uh, i think definitely this would be something to get into but obviously you got to do your own research on that uh, but over i would say 12 months you're going to see some pretty big gains from these privacy coins so yeah good uh good thing about that's what i think about that one crypto king uh algy says facebook and instagram have blocked crypto ad um, look, Facebook, I would say, if, um, I haven't seen the actual notification yet, but when Facebook says they're going to ban something, they'll roll it out across Instagram as well. So uh, normally, look, I, I've had ad, my ads banned when I was doing t-shirts. We had different businesses and I was doing t-shirts. We used to get a t-shirts banned because there was like an image or um, a word that they didn't like and they thought it was something inappropriate, and it wasn't. They just have machines doing this sort of stuff, and um, that's what they do, and they flag things. So that's all they're doing to do this. They just scan it, they and computers look at it, and they flag it and go, you know, turn off your ad and you can't use it. All right, Crypto King, um, they have a Google Play wallet. Yeah, they do. So anyone that's got, um, you know, use the Google on their phone, they'll be able to access it, and heaps of people have got Google. I've got, you know, Apple, so I don't have that. I've probably got other phones with Google on it, but I'm not worried about it. What do I think about Brave? Warwick says, what do I think about the Brave browser? So some of you guys, I might, uh, where are we at now? In about half an hour. I've got a couple of minutes. I'm glad you're coming out with some good questions. So Brave browser, I think it's, I think it's, um, we'll just Google it if I could spell it. I think it's just Brave, but let's have a look. Yeah, it's brave.com. That's the one. I've actually, I think I installed it on my Mac. I don't have it on on my PC. So the story behind Brave, and let's, let's go down here. Brave was an ICO recently. Go to ICO Drops. Yeah, it's one of my favorite places. We'll have a look at that. And uh, this is sort of what it looks like. You know, we, we might even be able to install it while we're doing how let's do a, a quick install all right let's see how long let's see how long it takes to download this so we got windows 7 oh, that'll do i got windows 7 plus yeah that'll do so download brave make sure always you got a secure lock up here it says brave.com you know and it's got this symbol don't be downloading it from some dodgy site so we click on it 
we'll download it. It's got about three minutes left. So while that's going, let's have a look at ICO drops. And let's type in Brave. And let's... Nothing found. I thought it was an ICO. Maybe it was my imagination. Brave. I might just go back a bit. Maybe it was my imagination they had an ICO. Or maybe what's the... Maybe it's got a coin. It does have a coin. Oh, it's BAT. That's right. It's BAT. What was I talking about? B-A-T. I just remembered then. It's called the BAT token. I'm sure it was BAT. No, maybe it's on coin market cap. Let's have a look here. So as you can see, this is how I research coins, right? Well, how I remember some stuff. Let's look up basic attention token. So we're still downloading 100 and 138 megs. So the website is basic attention token. Let's go there. Now it's at 50 cents. We'll have a look at their token. So it's all that this token's about digital advertising, right? So that's their token, but it's all based upon this Brave browser, which is this browser here. And the idea behind it is um, it blocks trackers and ad blockers and all sorts of stuff, um, and it's pretty fast, okay? Um, so it's interesting, if I click on About, I wonder if it tells us the story of how it started. Meet the team. Founder Brian. Wonder if that's him. One of the guys. I think it was Opera. I'm just trying to find it. Opera. The guy that I think it was Opera. That did Opera. One of the first browsers. I think it was Opera. Maybe it was another one. And um, basically, the um, he did one of the f the first ones, and then they've come up with. Um, this basic attention token. Maybe it wasn't an ICO. That's okay. Oh, it's nearly ready to install. All right. Let's install it. It's pretty far. It's pretty fast, and um, the best thing out blocks all the ads, so it's, it is pretty good. Um, the only reason I still stick with Chrome is because I have a bunch of plugins with Chrome. Like, um, you know, Evernote, LastPass for security. Um, and then when I'm using um, like MetaMask, so I haven't talked much about MetaMask. MetaMask is a, like a, um, a Chrome plugin that you use to protect your private keys when you're working with my, my Ethereum wallet. Uh, and there's also other things you can use as well. So, um, you know, that's, that's pretty cool, but I, I haven't done that with Brave. Brave has probably got some of those ones, but I haven't actually set that up. I think I've done something on my um, my Mac. So while that's installing, that's pretty good. Um, so well, I'll just check what questions you got. Can I check Data and Theta Coin? Yeah, I will have a look at those again. Oh, he created Firefox. Thank you, Crypto King. Yes. So um, his name escapes me, but he created Firefox. Now, Everyone remember, well, if you've been around for a while, you remember Firefox. Um, so he knows what he's doing in terms of the software. And um, like that's why it's such good software. So it's a it's a great platform. And it's fast. When you take out all the the ads and all this other stuff that goes on in, in browsers these days. So ready to make it your default browser? Uh, no, we don't want to make it my default browser. I still like Chrome. But so let's have a look. Um, that's pretty simple. Oh yeah. So it has a shield which is up here. It's a shields button tells you there is extension. So there's like LastPass extension, but I would need to make sure that these um the other extensions I can use. And then uh, this is the Brave payments, right? So this is for um this is this basic attention token. So if we go back to here. This is this one right here. 
And as you can see, um, it was like it's had a really low price. And the reason is it is 1.5 billion supply. Okay. Now it's got a half a, um, was it half a million? No. 500 million is the market cap currently. And if you have a look at the, uh, the price here, it, it did go up to like 20, 20 cents. In USD, we'll keep going. I think it's green. Yes, yeah, so 21 cents. It's went as high as, you know, 72, 85 cents. And now it dropped back to 60, maybe 42. Now, <clears throat> as more people on board and use this, and then if they use the, basically, the, the this part here, which is, we go back to the software. Once these more users use this, and then they use the um, these brave payments right that allows the price to go up because the, this crea is creating demand so then people start using this and go oh what's this all about and they click it and they're actually buying crypto and that's the idea behind it so if they can get more people to use um, that browser and like it and keep using it over other browsers you're going to see the price um, increase so as you can see it has been up to around about the 80, 80 cents mark, and I think it's at 52 cents. Now, at the moment, the market's down in a sideways thing, a sideways um, at the moment, traveling sideways. So this possibly in the next 12 months will make a move, especially if there's more users that come on board and more people demand this, this token. So I think it's a great idea because it's the tokens used as part of the software, and the software is, you know, pretty good stuff because it's a decent... Um, decent software so um, I think if we just like go to google.com you know let's have a look at coin market cap to see how quickly it loads coin market cap dot com we'll see if it shows any advertising because coin market cap's got advertising on it so if we go back to here this is what coin market like see all the ads okay there's ones up here here and here uh if we switch back to here check it out no ads and you know that's pretty nice it's pretty clean so um i mean that would be one benefit of using this and if we click the little icon up the top it says 13 ads and tracks blocked you can have all control over this if you want so the, sh the shields are up but it does make for a clean experience and much faster. Um, and then you've just got to check out the... I haven't went through the Brave payment system to see if that's all set up yet. But that is the potential of it. Essentially putting payments for publishers and then it tied into this browser. So the more people are getting using it, um, the more people are going to want to buy the basic attention token. So uh, yeah, that's pretty cool. So uh, definitely going to see some growth out of that over the next 12 months. All right, um, data and, and we've got data and theta and ribbon coin. All right, well, what we might do is I'll have a quick look at, we'll have a quick look at theta. And then we'll probably finish up then. I think we're about 40 minutes now. But if you guys have got any last questions, um, you've got my attention now so you can just ask me and I'll do my best to help you. This is the Theta token. I have talked about this before. They raised 20 million. Um, it only just finished in the 4th of January. Now they haven't moved far. They've only, um, are at 1.8. Now the market, you know, is down but we're at 1.8x. So you would have made some money. Um, you've basically, if we have a look at the um, Theta token, what's the token? Oh yeah, it's called Theta. Let's just see if it's on coin market cap theta token we'll just have a look at the chart I think it did pump yeah it did pump a bit before so you know when it when it hit, started out and then it actually went up to you know around about 30 cents now currently it's at 22 cents so it was maybe at 3x um, at that stage so you would have made more money uh, if you'd sold out up there if it, but at the moment it's they got a, it's a big project what they're trying to do is pretty huge and if they don't pull it off 
you know, look, it's not, the price is not going to go anywhere. You can check out their roadmap. Uh, if you click on this link which takes to the website, you can check out what their roadmap was. But essentially, they're trying to decentralize video delivery network. It's a big, big ask. And, you know, I don't know. At the moment, I don't know how many members they've got now, but they started out with four members. So I don't know whether it's, it's really going to take off, whether they've got enough talent to make this happen. Um, I didn't invest in this one because I, it's, a, it's just simply an app. I didn't think they had enough enough team members to make it work um maybe since that they've got 20 million they've got more i haven't checked the latest news from them um, but you know they're at 1.84 some of the other icos that in that time frame have actually done well some of them are at 5x so they're not doing so well on the the post you know, ico re, you know uh, return on investment there but they got a this is like a i remember seeing like a 12 month to two year before they were going to come out with um, you know, something that was actually usable. That's the problem with some of these services. They take a long time. So, you know, a year or two, this might, if it does come out, uh, this token's going to be worth something. So if you believe in the project and you're willing to wait a year or two and think that they can pull it off, then you put your money in. If you're not going to be prepared to wait that long and you don't think the team's going to do it, you don't invest, okay? Um, Ribbon coin, let's see if it's on coin market cap. So I'm only going to look up ones that are on coin market cap. If they're not on coin market cap, I won't look them up because they're probably going to be some dodgy lending program. I'm looking up Ribbon Coin. Ribbon. No, I can't see it there. I'm not sure about Ribbon Coin. What is my favorite coin? Oh, there's so many favorite coins. Look, it depends. I mean... Um, I can tell my least favorite is Bitcoin. It used to be my favorite when I first started. But because of the fees, I just got sick of paying fees. So then I, I, I liked Litecoin a lot. Litecoin was happening. It was it was cheap. It was fast. And it was doing pretty good. Um, and then and then Dash came along. And I got... Um, at the moment, I still can't buy Dash directly. We've only got... In Australia, we have Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum... Uh, and Litecoin, those are the only four you can buy. So um, I think um, in the States, I'm not sure what you can buy. If you are from the States, just type in um, in the live chat, just tell me what you can buy. That'd be great from Coinbase. Um, but yeah, I only know of those four. So I actually have to swap. I have to, I have to either buy from an exchange or I have to swap in Exodus. Normally, I just swap in Exodus. It probably costs a little bit more, but hey, it's pretty convenient. Because in Exodus, um, as you know, if I minimize this down a bit if I if I still got Exodus open yeah so you just go into exchange and um, you would just go oh, I've got Bitcoin cash and I want to swap it for dash for example and you might say um, I've got twenty dollars and I want to swap it so you can see it's twenty dollars here and they're giving you eighteen dollars twenty so they charge a fee and that's how Exodus plus um, they, they make money for the transfer. And then you click the exchange button and that's how it exchanges, all right? So, um, but I, I really like... Uh, Bitcoin Cash has been really good, fast payments. Um, so, that's been good. And But I like Dash. Dash, Dash is something, you know, in the next year is going to... Um, when they bring out their new platform, it's going to make it really easy for people to use the wallet. Um, look, <coughs> like there's better wallets, um, but but when they bring out this new um, platform for Dash, it's going to be huge. And at the moment, like you know, like the whole market was down, but Dash I think was like twelve hundred at one stage. It's only only half price of what it was. But when this is going to take off, when people start to uh, uh, use their, it's it's kind of like PayPal the way they want to make it as simple as PayPal to use payments. So Dash is probably one of my favorites. Um, some of these other coins are just unusable. Um, you could probably argue, you know, whether it's profitability, profitability or usability. I don't sort of fall too much in love with the coin, but I do like using Litecoin and Dash when I want to pay for things and transfer. Um, but at the moment, I'm using Bitcoin Cash. I still like Bitcoin Cash. Um, I just, I just, it's crazy to think that you know that it's a fork. Um, and this is just doing
doing so much better in terms of speed and they still, normal Bitcoin can't do it, you know, and there's reasons for that. So that's what I like with the coins. Uh, Warwick says, um, why does the address on exchanges change? And when you send funds to an address that's already changed, uh, will it still go into the exchange wallet? Yeah, Warwick, that's a good question. When I first um, sent coins to the exchange, they give you a deposit address. Each platform's different. I think it was on Poloniex or Bitrix at the time. So you would sign up, you would click on deposit or something like that, right? And every single coin was listed and you could click on a deposit and then it would give you an address. Now that address didn't always stay the same. Some of them stayed the same, but some of them change. Now what happened was, um, I think... I had an address and I sent the funds to that address. Um, but then when I went back in, the, the the address had changed. I think that's what you're talking about. Now, it worked for me. It, I sent it and it did actually get into my account. However, if generally, if you've got to go straight from cr- check that address to make sure it's correct and then deposit immediately in there. If that address changes it's highly likely that your funds will be sent and not credited to your account. Then you're going to have to contact them. And normally it takes a long time to get a response and then whether or not they can fix it, who knows. So you've got to be careful. I don't know if you've got anything stuck there waiting to be deposited, but honestly, this happens all the time. Also, I do not recommend transferring from one exchange when you need to send it out. Always send it back out into like a personal wallet, okay? Send it back out into maybe Exodus or something like that because some platforms use smart contracts and if you try and send your funds out, like let's say you're sending Ethereum and you want to send it to another platform, uh, I've heard plenty of stories where um, those funds get sent to the other the other exchange and then they, they go off into, um, just go off into fairyland. They, they, they don't get recovered because they go to addresses that um, that can't be accessed. So you've got, to be, you've got to be careful with this sort of stuff. And always, when you're transferring funds, do if, you, if you're worried, do a small amount first. Um, don't do large amounts. So when you're transferring, let's say you're transferring $30,000. Once you transfer $10 or $100 first into that and make sure that works, then you've risked only $10. Um, and if it fails... Okay, then you've lost $10, no biggie. But you need to always do test transactions when you're unfamiliar with something. Otherwise, you're going to lose your coins. It's, it's just like you know using the wrong address or wrong coin and sending a different coin to the other coin address. Sometimes wallets will prevent that from happening, but I've heard plenty of people that had Bitcoin and they sent it to Bitcoin Cash and they lost it or other types of things happen like that. And it's easily done. All right, um... <laughs> so Chanel says uh, can you check Falcon coin lending platform no mate I'm sorry I'm not going to do any lending platform crap um, I'm just going to do real stuff where you make real money off normal coins and off like ICOs like honestly how much do you think you're going to make off a, a lending platform um, sure you're going to get it's going to show on your screen that you're making some money you might put in ten thousand dollars and you're making fifty dollars a day getting that that you know twenty grand you put in putting it back every day and then you get to sign up people to join um and then one day you know you're thinking you're rolling in it because your account's now at 50k and maybe you're pulling out hundred dollars a day and you're really excited and then all of a sudden you go to log in and you can't and then you get a message to say oh, i'm sorry we've had a denial of a service attack we've been hacked and we've lost all the funds. But really, they've actually taken your funds and taken off and going to start another Ponzi scheme. Don't get involved with lending platforms. There's just no point. Get into normal coins and hold them or get into ICOs where you can make like just a huge amount of money in a short period of time. So, um, yeah, I won't do any of that. So, I do appreciate the question, but I'm not doing any on lending platforms. Alrighty, um, well, I think we're going to wrap it up. We're nearly at an hour. Um, I do appreciate everyone. And I do go through all your comments. They're all here. Um, let's have a quick look. So, I do get them all and I do read them all. And um, I'll probably, 
I'll, over the course of the next month, I'll probably try some different things with maybe selecting some of the best questions. Uh, instead of like doing a random giveaway, I might just go with the people that ask really good questions. Um, and then I can talk about those questions and they'll get the $10. So I'll let you know when I want to make that change, but I'm thinking of doing that and also maybe doing something special for um, some of the guys, you guys live. Um, I'll do something for you. So I do that randomly uh, for people that are on and generally I will do it at the end. I might do something special where you can uh, either get some extra coin because that's what you have to do. You've got to build up your portfolio. Even if you start with there's $10 you win the giveaway, right? You just keep contributing to your coin and after a while it will grow. And don't worry about the, the, the value going down because the value fluctuates all the time. But when it goes up, you'll go, wow. When it goes down, you go, oh, no. So you've got to um, you got to not get too emotional about it. you just got to consistently build that portfolio of coins. And sometimes instead of looking at the value of the coin, you want to look at how much coin you actually have. How much Bitcoin do you have? How much physical coins of Bitcoin or Dash do you hold? And not necessarily the value. Because the value will take care of itself over the time because these are limited you know, these are limited things. These these coins are limited in their capacity. It's not like money where it's just printed and loses its value. All right. And yes, um, uh, I am going to be at 500 subs soon. That's exactly right. I am so <laughs> excited about that. Um, where are we at? I think I'll just have a quick look. Go back to my dashboard. I might even do something special for 500, I gotta think. And we're getting close. I'm at 478. So that's exciting. So if you guys know anyone that uh, are interested in crypto and you, you think that I provide some value and answer some questions and maybe if they want to get some extra coin, that'd be great. Just let them know about me and if you can share the channel with them, that'd be great. Um, for all you guys that are new, if you like, subscribe um, to the channel and hit the little bell icon. Uh, that way you'll get notifications when I do the live. Um, yeah, if you do that and then just ask a question or put a comment in, I will read those. Um, and at this stage, we're picking out a random winner which I do every day and you'll get ten dollars worth of Bitcoin cash so uh, pretty excited about that so tomorrow I'll be drawing another winner and then the next day another winner so yeah it's pretty awesome and I like all the questions I don't have to think about content because you guys ask me the questions and then I get to talk about that and hopefully get to answer your question and if you get on live you can um, talk to me and get focused attention and get those answers you need okay and my Twitter account. Um, I don't actually have a Twitter account for uh, Econ Rebel. You know what? Maybe maybe I do. I have to check that. I'll have a look. I'm, I may... I've got my own personal account, which has got all different sort of stuff on it. But I might check to see if I've done one for Econ Rebel. I think I did. I just haven't logged into it for a while. That would be good because then some of you guys might follow me on Twitter. Um, I have got Facebook set up. I haven't got a strong following in Facebook at the moment, but that's okay. Um, but you guys on YouTube have been great. And I think people like the YouTube's pretty good because, you know, you get to see what you want to see when you subscribe. With Facebook, it's like, uh, you don't always get to see it. It always scrolls past and you miss it and you can't find it. At least with um, YouTube, you can find the videos. It's pretty good. So that's good. I'll check. I'll make sure I can, um, if I... I'll get my Twitter account happening. I haven't looked at that yet, but but I, yeah, I use Twitter myself, so I use it for the news. So maybe I'll just put news stuff related on there as well. Um, and I'll finish up with the. Um, I think I had um, had a new member join today. That was so exciting. Um, so congratulations for for joining. Um, that was for the for the course. Okay, and you know it's. It's so important if you want to get into um, ICOs. If you're not ready for ICOs, that's fine. Just learn about the the coins, and I'm going to tell you all about that. But if you're familiar with you know how to use coins and how to do a bit of trading, um, and you're looking for that next thing, ICOs is where it's at. Um, it's just you know you talk. I talk about ICO drops and how much some of the some of the the gains, and even some of the like the market's been doing nothing right recently. It's just been flat, okay. But it, when you check out the um, the some of these ICOs that ended just recently, and you have a look at where they're at in terms of you know, so let's have a look at um, these are ones that have just ended. So let's go down a little bit. So let's say they ended at. I'm just going to pick a random one. 
10th of January. I don't even know if... Let's say they're trading out on the exchanges yet. I'm not sure. Let's have a look. Not yet. Not yet for block array. Oh, actually, maybe they are. ARY. Sometimes they update it. Twenty six cents. Let's see what block array is. I just chose a random one. Okay, so they did start out at twenty six cents. They doubled and they've gone back to about twenty, about thirty six, and then down to twenty six cents. So they have, they did do a situation where you would have doubled your money in block array at the moment, and now you're back to probably um, they haven't moved too much. That was just one random one from January, and then uh, if we have a look at, I'll just pick one more. Uh, where are we? we have a look ship chain that's right this was we'll have a quick look that see if that's available so they um, 30 million I'm not sure if they're out yet ship token let's have a look at that one because what happens is they have they're in the ICO stage okay ship okay not yet so what happens is some of these ICOs come out but they don't get on to exchanges straight away and others do um, we, you know, we've looked at um, Theta token before. Let's look at Zilliqa. Zilliqa, sorry. Twenty. Like, like, okay. Just picture this. This, this is fourth of January. Okay, fourth of January. I've just picked something. It's not even a month ago. Look, look at the returns. That's twenty x, twenty x, on this. It's at eight cents. That's it's just incredible. This is a huge. I, I I wish I would have got into this one when it um when it started. So these happen all the time. That that's just fantastic. In less than a month, twenty x. So that's like buying a coin for a dollar, and then a month later, it going to twenty dollars. So if you put a thousand dollars into that, you'd now have um. Oh my god, my math's bad. Thousand times. 20 uh, let's get so i think it's i don't want to make a mistake i'm going to use my calculator that's what i thought 20 20 000, $20, 000, um if you put one grand in 10 grand in that would be 200 200k pretty good eh? so this happens quite regularly with some of these icos they go 10x and in this case it's when 20x so yeah that's why i'm into icos and if you're interested click the link below uh, you can check out the course and have a look at um, the course my good friend NG Gavin put together. Uh, and we I help him with that project. Um, and we do, in, he does all the training and everything like that. Great videos. Um, and we all part of a Slack group. So there's, there's over 200 members at the moment. And every every week people, t we get on on Monday nights. We go through the, um, we do a, like a webinar. And we, uh, we tell all the new members, show them how to get up to speed. And we get people on to talk to about their experiences. And there's some people that have already hit six figures in the group, uh, and and more than one. There's, there's quite a few. So it's it's pretty powerful stuff. It'll change your life. And even if you start out, it wouldn't matter if you start out with thirty five dollars. <laughs> these people start out with less than that, and once you um, double up your money, once you're making two x or five x, and then you put it into the next one and the next one, literally in three to six months. You could be at, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50K, all right, even more. So, um, yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff, and I get, I get pretty excited about it. So, all right, I'm going to finish up now. I really appreciate you guys. Um, and when will Bitcoin prices again? I think we're going to see it over the next month it go up. We, it might be a while before it gets over 20K, but I, I think in the next month we start to see even increase in Bitcoin and the rest of the market as well. All right, it's good having you guys on board. Thank you very much. I will see you guys tomorrow. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave a comment and your Bitcoin Cash address. Okay, see you then. Bye.